Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser. This video is part of a series on basic Java for programmers. So you already know some programming, you just don't know Java yet. So in this video, we're going to do um, creating a simple class in IntelliJ. We're going to be have a main function and create a couple little sub-functions we can call. These will all be static functions. We'll look at the if statement and we'll do a basic loop. So let's see it. So I've already got IntelliJ launched, and here at the uh, project creation wizard that came up for me, uh, with no projects loaded, I'm going to say I want to create a new project. It gives me quite a few options about what kind of project I want. I just want a standard Java project. I'm going to use Gradle for my build system, and it's selected here the uh, project SDK. So I need to select for Java an SDK to work with. Um, if you don't yet have one, you might have to install Java, the Java SDK. So that sounds good. Uh, this screen here is where you put in the information about your project and what you want to name it. You can leave the group ID blank and then just name the artifact ID as to what your basic project is going to be. Uh, so this is going to be, I'm going to call this one fun with numbers uh, because we're going to write a little thing to kind of process some numbers. And that sounds good. I'll go next here, uh, some basic project settings. I'm just going to leave it as the defaults. They're all going to work for us, I think. And project name, fun with numbers, I'm going to put it in d slash my t directory for temp, and it all looks pretty good. Um, you might, if you had um, a git folder for like storing git files or something, you could put it under there. Um, you can also do git integration with uh, IntelliJ. Uh, see some other of my videos for covering that. So here we go, launched our project, and we've now got it set up. At the bottom here, we can see the build system and what it would do for us. Uh, we'll see this again as we actually get some project or some code running. On the left-hand side, we see our different folders. The one we really care about is our source folder, and under it, it's already automatically given us a main folder and a test. So if I go into main and Java, there's nothing here yet. I'm going to right-click on that, and I'm going to create a new Java class. And uh, let's just name this one, uh, I'm going to call this one my main. My main. You'd normally want to describe it much better than that, but this will be good for starts. Okay, so execution in Java starts with a main function. Now that main function has the following syntax. We have to say that it is public so that it can be executed. It is static so we can execute it without instantiating the object. Uh, public static, and it's going to return void for nothing, and it's named main. Now it also has to take in some arguments, and the arguments that we're looking for, it's going to take in an, a string array. So I'm going to just call it args, and it's an array of strings. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to want to do uh, system.out.print, let's try that again, the system class, so it's capital S, is the uh, convention. When you have a class, it starts with a capital letter, so that's the system class. System.out.println for print with a line feed, and of course we're going to say hello world from Java. And all statements in Java end with a semicolon. So now I'm going to run this. My favorite hotkey here is Control Shift F10 for run the current file. I can also do it over here. Right click on the file I wish to run, and I can go down here to run my main main. You can have a bunch of different mains in throughout your project. They're all inside of different classes, so it can differentiate them. You don't get a linking error like you might in C++. So I'm going to say run my main. It's going to build it. We can see down here at the bottom it's telling me it's building, and then it ran it. And here's the actual output from my program. Now another hot uh, tip for using IntelliJ is you can do S out, and it gives me a suggested on screen, I'm just going to hit enter, and it automatically completes to system.out. Uh, woot, saving time. And I will do control shift F10 again, or I could actually do S shift F10 if I wanted, and it would rerun it. It's nice and working. Okay, let's get rid of that with a control uh, Y, I believe, yes. Control Y to delete the current line. Okay, so we've created our project, we created main, uh, let's come up with a function. Functions are awesome, let's make one. So I'm going to make this one a private, uh, make things private unless you need it to be public, so we make it private. This is going to be static as well because I'm going to actually call it directly from main. I'm not yet instantiating objects, that'll be in a later tutorial, so it's going to be static as well. Private, static, and I'm just going to square a number. So it's going to be an integers I'm going to work with, I'm going to just call it square. Int n. So we're going to take in an argument named n, and we're just going to return. Return n times n. Let's call it. So I'm going to do s out, 
And I'm going to say, let's do 42 squared. Let's do it this way. 42 hat 2 is equal to, and I can use concatenation here to concatenate a value on. Um, so I could call it right here, square, I want to square 42. Or let's make a variable. Uh, and rather than actually me retyping that, I'm going to use some refactoring. So I'm going to highlight it, and then right click on it, go down to refactor, and it's kind of off the screen maybe a little bit, but I want to extract, and I'm going to extract a variable, which it tells me is control alt v. So I'm going to extract a variable, and I'll call this one square, oops, squared. So an explanatory variable here maybe doesn't add much, but it shows we can create variables. So we create our variable there, and let's run it. So Shift F10 will work. Um, you only have to hit Control Shift once so that it teaches it what you want to run. Uh, Control Shift F10 will make it run the current file. And so 42 squared is that, which maybe we'll accept on faith that that's actually true. OK, so we've got our one function here. Let's make a new function. Uh, private static. And let's make it return a string, because we can do some string processing. And let's call this one get number description. And we're going to actually do a couple different things here. And we'll take an n as before, just to, for fun. Um, so what I'm going to do at the end, I'll show you kind of where we're going to go. We're going to go re return. I want to return a string and the number. And I'll put it in n. We'll fill that in. Is And I'm going to put in even or odd. We'll figure that out in a minute. And squared is something. We'll put that in. And square root is something else. We'll fill that in later as well. Oops, question mark. All these are just sort of placeholders for the moment. All right, and I don't need the that there. OK. Uh, and I'll actually squared. Squared. OK, so we got to kind of come up with some of these, fill in these placeholders. So the first one I want to fill in is n. I've already got it. Like that's going to work. And it's kind of getting off the screen here, so I'm going to put it down to the next line and build this as I go. And then I'm going to say here if it's even or odd. So I can do this in a few different ways. Let's first off create a variable up here. Boolean is even, say. And I can simply say it's equal to n mod 2. Now, is that going to work? In mod 2, I've got to say double equal. It's not like in C++, you could do something like this, and it would actually then compile. Maybe not quite right yet, uh, because it comes out to be a number. Mod is, of course, modulus. But in Java, Boolean is a type that's completely separate from ints. So I've got to say, if n mod 2 is double equal to 0, then I know it's even. So that's going to be my Boolean variable. Um, I could create another variable here that would be a string, and I could describe it. Um, let's do it that way, sure. Um, so I could, well, rather than do it that way, it makes it a bit complicated. Uh, sure. String uh, even str, even string. And I could do an if statement here. Uh, sure, let's do that. So I'll start off with this being nothing. I'm going to say if is even. Even stir is equal to uh, even. Else, even stir is equal to odd. Uh, tip is always put in the curly braces. Uh, it saves you time later, and it makes your program more robust under change that you won't forget these later. Um, so if you put these in the curly braces to give you a block, this creates a block. Um, always put those in for your if and else blocks, likewise for your loops, um, just for more robust code. So down here, we want to say is even. I'm going to fill this into the variable even stir. And we'll drop bring that down the next line. We've already got the even odd. So maybe what I'll do is, sure, why not? I'll kind of complete my output here, just making it. Uh, squared is, I need a new variable squared. And we'll create a new one down here. Oops. Uh, square root is, and I call this one root. Now, don't you have those variables? Yeah, why not? Keep the formatting uh, symmetric across all this. I square root. Uh, that's gonna look a bit better. I haven't yet created these variables, so let's go ahead and create them. I can. 
move to it, I can uh, hold Alt, hit Enter for my kind of quick fix, and I'm going to create a local variable named squared. And here it is, it thinks it should be a string. Uh, I don't actually want it to be a string, I'm going to make it an int. That's uh, going to be one thing for me, and then the next one I haven't yet created, I'm going to hit Alt, Enter on this again, create a variable called root, and it's going to be here, it's going to be a double. Right, so, and it's currently doing renaming, so i got to go in the box, hit Enter to complete the rename. So squared, I'm going to call my function square, which I already just wrote, and I'm going to square n. That gets me partway there. And to do the square root, I need to call the math uh, class. Now the math class has a lot of built-in functions for me, so I'm going to say math.square, oops, sqrt, we see that it wants to take in a double, I can go control, oops, uh, go, uh, control p, if you go control p, it'll tell you what the arguments to the function should be. So it wants a double a, uh, so we use n, it'll do automatic type promotion here, and it'll promote it up to a double for me. Okay, so now I've got a basic function that's going to do some little bit of work for me. I'll just show you the whole function again. So we can see what that's going to look like. Now, let's call it. So I'm going to do a s out to autocomplete this, and info, uh, let's just actually print the whole thing. Eh, why not? So I'm going to create a string. I'm going to call it info is equal to, and my function I called get number, I'll just start typing get num, and it auto-completes. Control P, and it'll tell me the information about the arguments, in this case there's only one. So my n, and let's do, why not, 42 again. We already started, and I'm just going to print out info. Shift F10 to run, and it gives me the information on that. Okay, so now I've got my function, I can call them, and so forth. We used an if statement already. Let's use some loops. So the primary loop you're going to want to use is a for loop. While loops work as well. Um, and do while loops as well, likewise. So for int i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus plus, standard style of a for loop. Again, I'm always going to put in the curly braces even when I don't need them. I'm going to do an s out. And I'm just going to call info, oh, not info, pardon me, I'm going to call get number description on i. I could delete these curly braces if I really wanted to, but again, the blocks help me later on under modification. So now I've got my standard for loop. Let's print it out. Shift F10, runs it. Zoom in a little so we can see the word. And here we have 0 through 10, 0 through 9, I guess, because I did less than 10. And we can check and basically the numbers add up correctly. And the square root even comes out to be basically what we think it should be. Okay, that's all I wanted to show in this video. Look at for future videos linked in the series here for how to work with a data class, work with an array list, and a little bit on model view separation. Thank you very much for watching.